In a recent published article on the German magazine Mint, dedicated to vinyl, they state that over 99% of current produced records are digital. But not only digitally sourced. What am I talking about? Let's see. Okay, guys, yes, this is a huge aspect, greatly overlooked by everyone, including me. Hopefully with this video, we're going to try to understand better what's happening because we're going to talk about the analog delay versus the digital delay in vinyl mastering, in the production, the cutting of the lacquers who then make our precious vinyl records. This came... Uh, I already heard about this in the past, but when I started speaking with Kai Seaman, I interviewed him. He is the president of Speakers Corner. Here is a link to the interview. You're also going to find it in the video description. He made me think about this, giving me even more insight. And uh, now I finally had the time to do some research and I want to present this huge issue regarding the quality sound and what type of material, sonic material, is reaching our records in the past and in the present. Let's get going. Okay, so let's take a step backward and try to understand what is the issue here. So as you can imagine, apart from the Rhea curve, which already are I a, a curve uh, helped, greatly helped the uh, optimization of the amount of grooves of material on a record. As you know, the rear curve cuts off uh, the lower bass mainly because that's those frequencies are very large, have a, big, have, a, have a big amplitude on the vinyl record, which then is reversed back in playback. That's why we also are using our phono stages or phono amplifiers, preamplifiers which give back that EQ on the bass, especially. So, but that's a different story. Here we're talking about a different aspect, okay? Which is still connected to mainly, I would say, space. That's the main issue here. Space on records. We don't have, we didn't have a much enough space in order to also have a good quality reproduction. Hence, we needed more space, Plus, if we wanted a good amount of volume on the signal, on the record, cut on the record, and not just a teeny weeny whispering sound, which would gave, give a much more um, narrow type of groove, we had to find a different solution. So the objective here is to try to pack up the grooves as much as possible without having clearly any type of overcut, where two grooves go one, top, one on top of each other. But at the same time, also keep a little bit some distance from the center because well, clearly we have inner groove distortion. If you want to know a little more about inner groove distortion, I also did a video. Here is a link. You're also going to find one here below. So in order to solve this type of problem, you needed to know what kind of signal you had. What was the dynamic range of a certain track? So one solution is to the mastering engineer would listen throughout the whole uh, album or the whole track and carefully analyzing what was the peak in a specific part. That peak determined the maximum amplitude of the groove on the record. Hence, if by any chance during the recording, clearly the mixing and mastering optimize that you're not going to have you're going to have a little something a little more homogeneous nevertheless there are those peaks especially in vinyl so at that point you have to find the maximum one and that set it the maximum as i said amplitude of the whole entire track and at that point you wouldn't have optimize uh, volume, you wouldn't have the optimized frequency range and dynamic range. 
Those are also tied from the speed, obviously, but also from the amplitude of the groove, because clearly you have to cut off some frequencies in order to keep that narrow, especially the lower frequencies, as we said before. Hence, instead of doing this, what is the solution? The solution is try to somehow understand before the signal. If we have a peak at a certain point, and at that point, correct it. But not an overall correction on all the track based on the highest peak, but instead, uh, rotation by rotation, um, we could say note by note, practically, and that point, correct the pitch. That's the key word here. The pitch, which is not the musical pitch, but pitch is the amplitude, the width of the groove. So if you have that type of technology, you can optimize greatly the amount of space and all the other features I said before, all the way up to 60%. That's a lot, guys. In fact, already starting in the, in the 50s, Neumann lathes, the lathe is the uh, machine that cuts the, la the lacquer, which then will give birth after a series of passages to the stampers who will print our records, okay? So uh, in order to have that, Already starting from the 50s, Neumann implemented some uh, solutions, little rough solutions to obtain this. But it wasn't very precise. The, the delay was very, very short, so you couldn't really optimize also the amplitude. Well, instead, starting in 1970, we have the Neumann VMS-70, which is currently one of the best uh, cutting lathes together with the VMS-80 still available in the end. As I said in another video, we are stuck in this technology from the pressing plant point and also the lathe cutting. If you want to see also that video, here's a link. You're also going to find it below. So in 1970, we have that. We starting to have a computerized, yes, delay, okay, in order to establish this different type of pitch. In fact, if you take a look at uh, these early lathes, currently used, you have that box on the right, which is usually dedicated to the electronics that were supposed to calculate the pitch of the groove. Clearly, the mastering engineer had to establish uh, the depth of the groove, but also the land, which is the me measurement between one groove and the other. So, and constantly checking everything. But as we know, when you start cutting, it has to be one single cut. So, technology together with the experience of the mastering engineer we're starting to make great records especially during the 70s that's also why i would say we have such great sounding records from the 70s although we must admit that also the 50s and 60s have a golden age of especially in the recording technique but that's another story in any case great technology great experience are delivering this but how how do you do this you need an analog delay, which is a special tape recorder. Here you're going to see a scheme, which we were talking along with uh, Kai, where you have two heads, okay? This is the basic understanding of delay. If you don't have a tape recorder with two heads, you can't do it. In fact, they're extremely rare now and extremely expensive to modify because they're usually modified Studers, Ampex, Scullies, uh, and other types of, uh, of machines in order to have two heads and a series of pulleys to have that delay, as you can see in the scheme. So the first head reads the tape and sends the signal to the electronics in delayed, capable of dealing with this delay. Then that is driving the whole lathe in order to have to adjust itself, okay, to have the correct pitch of the grooves, the correct amplitude. While the second head is dedicated to the signal, the program that is going to be on the vinyl record, okay? So this is the delay that allows an optimization from the different aspects that we said. Where comes in the problem? The problem comes in when, first of all, you don't have access to a, a double head type with, a, with all the path, the tape path delay. That's, as we said, very expensive. Plus, already starting, as we know, 
uh, in the 80s we have even late 70s actually but mainly 80s we have digital recordings which also started to go towards what a digital delay that's the big issue here because with a digital delay clearly you're not going to have all a series of costs of issues you can then uh, do the final eq uh, amplification rea curve all in digital and then it finally is converted back clearly to analog and sent to the cutting head but if you do that you're not having an analog signal coming from the tape nope but you're having a conversion to digital which it's all then relegated to the converter you have and we're doing this starting uh, in the late 70s one of the main examples is the ampix add1 introduced in 1979 and if we take a look uh, on billboard for example i found this little article where we have a description you can clearly understand what is taking place as you can see it says the add1 eliminates the need for the additional preview path and tape electronics common to disk mastering transport transports the delayed signal becomes the program audio while the direct from tape signal supplies preview drives to the lathe electronics so as you can see already in 1979 big revolution we're having that and this system is a 16 bit re um, resolution but unfortunately along the road we're going to find uh, 14 12 all the way down to 8 bit digital delay like for example micro framer underlined this recently in japanese pressings several japanese pressings have this conversion have this delay with an 8-bit resolution don't let me comment that if i only think that in the past the the, the uh, most of these pressings were regarded as the best of the best in any case apart from that so already starting uh, especially in the 80s we have this big problem which is going to be optimized also as we said with the vms 80 so as we have said starting from the mid 80s we have a growing use of this digital delay all the way up to today but what is worrying is that a lot of recordings were still analog and that is how they're communicated to the public analog recording mastering mixing it's an aaa but then a lot of times we're, they're not telling us that they have this delay and hence a conversion so even a, and this is happening still today that is why mint the journal mint was saying that over 99 percent of current productions is just digital it comes from digital because even if you're doing an aaa project in the past as today you have that final flop block which counts more than anything digital block that will clearly change the whole thing the whole procedure and clearly the sound so uh, this is going to be shocking for a lot of people and in fact i think that the industry especially after all the scandal with the mofi should start to put a little more information not only in the in the, the source not only in the source too easy now but also in this this type of information for example the delay because as kai was underlining there are very few machines now that have that speakers corner rely on studios on manufacturers uh, that do implement that that do have that type of uh, studers of uh, recorders that have the analog delay that is something we must require a certification something that uh, somehow guarantees that the whole chain including delay is analog because we are paying paying very extremely high prices and i think we can do that we can pay them but we really know what we are buying okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video can't wait to read your comments and remember especially in this case music is born analog well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, 
please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.